welcome to the Sunday Night Reflux live stream, where today I'm joined by another very special guest, Remy from Bahama Lama Cull. Remy, Remy, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Very, very well. Yeah, it's great to have you on. It's, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been watching your channel for quite a while, um, long before your, uh, your BRS uh, uh, your BRS days and so it's re really good to get you on and have a chat and get to uh, get under the bonnet I appreciate that yeah, thank you <clears throat> yeah so I'll, uh, I'll do a bit of a, an introduction uh, and this is this is kind of my understanding as it is so for those of you who don't know Remy is a, a saltwater youtuber who uh, runs videos on his channel Bahama Lama Coral which I've linked in the description you should go and check it out um, you do a lot of uh, tank tours in particular and uh, you've also done kind of tours of coral vendors uh, and, uh, and and that sort of thing as well uh, and by and you you've kind of got the uh, the advantage in uh, in the in the youtubing game because you are a professional entertainer so <laughs> in the sense that you're a, uh, a radio dj yes i'm not a dancer i'm not i'm not a dancer on the side no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the other things that you're most known for that i seem to see if anyone is talking about remy they're talking about weeping will <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sorry for, uh, because I, I think Jake Adams had one of the, one of the first ones that I ever saw on, on YouTube. And then I kind of set out on the quest to find one and, uh, found something similar. And he had asked, I had asked him, I was like, is this, is this like yours? And he's like, I did a whole video on it, bro. Like do the research for yourself and find out if it is or not. And so I did, and it seemed like it was close enough. And so he allowed me to, to use the name. So yeah, this there, there she is. This is it, right? Yeah. yeah. I was scrolling through your Instagram uh, before, uh, before, well, an hour or so ago, and this seems to get the most attention by quite a long time. And this is, this is the the, the video, the, the the things that um, are really. Well, hang on a second. No sound from Alex. Hmm. Right, guys. Let's. Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt for a second. Let's go back. Is that better on the microphone? I've just turned it up. Oh, in fact, I can hear myself now. Let me just turn that up a little bit more. There we go. Right. So oh. <laughs> let's test. Right, guys, tell me now if now. So say, type the word now into the, uh, the chat. And, and if, if now is good, uh, then we're OK. But people are saying they can't <laughs> hear me. But they can hear you. So Here, here's my test. Amazing. This is a test. This is a, a Chuck tester. One, That's two, three. Better. OK. So I think we're all good. In there fact, we go. Yeah, yeah. Actually, OK, cool. <laughs> you're 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 on but low all right okay but let's wait because i've just turned it up since then so i'll wait till now there we go all good right we're fixed i'm gonna crank that up a little i'm gonna try not to break it too much but yeah so uh i can't remember where we were but we were talking i think we we're talking about your your weeping willow but that, that's the one that's yeah that's what seems to get the most attention uh and i, I think you get uh, pestered for for frags of it all the time right <laughs> yes i do i actually got i got an email today from uh someone in the st louis area that was like Hey, uh, I know you said you had a long list, but can I? And I was like, eh, I just I don't have any I don't have any frags uh, of it right now. But that's uh, it's stuff that's definitely it's it's going to come down down the pipeline here. But I mean, I only, I only have so much to go around and I really don't want to chop them up too much. Um, I've got like three or four different like mothers now. Mm -hmm. So eventually I'll, I'll frag some more. But uh, yeah, it's uh. It's definitely a very popular coral, which I think is is kind of nice. It's kind of nice to have a leather coral that's that's uh, that's popular. So it's usually the it's usually the acros and the torches and the zoas that take the you know the really colorful ones. But it's cool that this one's kind of uh, kind of a popular one. Exactly right. And uh, the and by the way, so I've I've just cranked my mic up. I'm just I think I might be clipping a tiny bit, but this should now be pretty much perfect anyway um and that, that kind of talk so i wanted to talk about like your your reefing philosophy and what sort of what tanks you run and, and that sort of thing because you're not just a another copy and paste sbs aquapora guy are you and uh, all the all the sexy uh, torches and all that sort of stuff so what what do you what do you like in uh, in a tank um i think for me i just i've always steered into what i like at the time um there's definitely a couple mainstays that i love i have you know, obviously, I'm a big fan of zoanthids. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of mushrooms. I just feel like the, the variation in colors are boundless. Whereas when you get into, you know, your leather corals and things like that, you're looking at pinks, yellows, grays, 
screens, you know, those kinds of things. So they're more muted. I just like uh, I like when you can go out to a frag swap and you can see something and you're like, wow, that's something I've never seen before. Mm. And you pick it up and, you know, hopefully it's not seven hundred dollars or whatever mm. uh, when you do pick it up. But I think m my reefing philosophy has always kind of been I'm just growing slow. You know what I mean? I. I think I started in this hobby with all the easy stuff and am now ready to kind of start venturing into that SPS realm, mm -hmm. um, a more heavy SPS realm. I've, I've successfully kept it in the past. I've just not had like a, a, a tank that was totally dominant with it. Um, so is that, is, is that what you want to do or are you just, you, you've just been holding off because you've been enjoying it, but actually you fancy getting into the old Aquapora? Yeah, I think uh, I think the Acropora is the next step. I think SPS heavy is the next step. And, you know, I, I always I always joke that every everybody who gets into this hobby has the same path for the most part. Uh, they, we might all do it a different way, but I hear from so many people um, that will reach out to me and just be like, hey, where do I get started? And I just love the flowy corals. I love I love some I love movement in the tank. Mm. And I think that that's a very we all i think we all enjoy it but i think that's a very novice level remark if that makes sense and then you get into okay well i'm keeping these or maybe they're just outgrowing the tank you know the toadstools are just freaking huge yeah. uh and and then you you progress into the lps and you progress into a little bit harder sps and it's just like it's like a natural progression so i'm along the way taking little little off the beaten paths like with my clownfish breeding stuff my clownfish started mm. to spawn and i was like you know what i'm just gonna i'm gonna see if i can keep these things alive because i mean they're terrible parents they're just gonna eat their mm. kids anyway so uh might as well at least try and see so i did research on that um another offshoot that i've explored is macro algae and pico tanks yeah, okay. and i think that that's uh that's been a lot of fun to explore so so the, PK, get the, the PK tanks. So actually, first off, the, the, you talked about kind of um, graduating onto uh, or developing onto to SPS, and it's it's not that pe people often see it as like SPS is the pinnacle, and that's the way you end up going, and that is often the case. But it's not that I always think that it's not that SPS tanks are better; they're just different. Yeah, and I, I like that your tanks are a little bit different, and on so you had the uh, the, the tiny little uh, uh, macro algae tank, didn't you? I can't remember if you had fish in it. Uh, did you yeah. have fish in it? I don't. I, so I've got I've got the Pico tank, which is this this little two and a half gallon. Uh, that's got a um, it's resident as a pom pom crab, and okay. he's awesome. And I can't yeah, believe yeah. he's still alive because I guess their lifespan is only about a year and a half. And I've definitely had him for about two years. I'm okay. guessing that having a a regular meal is probably a good thing for their uh, their longevity. Then I've got the uh, the lagoon tank behind me. This is a twenty five lagoon, and then the uh, where am I looking? over here is the 45 gallon frag tank and then i've got a couple other little uh little tanks over here that's uh uno and dosa's tank they're going to be moving here soon those are my first two uh clownfish that i've raised from eggs mm -hmm. and then i've got the brs macro tank that was my okay. first that was my first like foyer into uh the bulk reef supply videos that i did so i did a whole series on a macro algae tank and that is um it's behind the camera right now but that's about nine gallons i think and uh it's got a whole bunch of different macros in it and stuff so that one's actually the easiest one to keep because it all kind of just kind of grows does its thing keeps itself clean and uh given that you're growing uh sort of decorative algae does that mean that you don't have to worry about uh, best algae growing because it's out competed it's effectively a refugium um you know to an extent i just noticed it was funny you say that because this tank's been up and running for i don't know maybe seven eight months now and i had a big hair algae problem in the beginning of its of its life and so you'd think you know having all these larger macro mm -hmm. algaes in there uh that it's it's going to out compete and it eventually did. And so all the hair algae just like magically left. You know, I, I manually removed what I could here and there, but eventually it just it just left. But I just noticed that there's some in there now. So okay. which is weird because everything is like massive, like it needs to be clipped so bad. Uh, the Calerpa's like taking over the tank and uh, I need to trim it back so bad. So it's interesting that hair algae is still in existence in there. But yeah. Hair algae and cockroaches are what's going to be left when the, uh, the Holocaust comes. <laughs> it's very um, true. 
and so with so that so you set that that tank up just for for BRS. So, but you're planning on keeping it, right? I think so. I think so. We'll see what happens when I start breaking down tanks because what's going to happen is, you know, these two tanks over here are going to get broken down because I've got a tank that I've been wanting to set up for quite some time now. It's a just a 65 gallon uh, Tideline tank. I've got a stand for it and ever like a proper stand, not like two by fours. <laughs> and, you know, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to be a legitimate reefer now because everything's going to look cool. But uh yeah, uh, I, I can't wait to get that up. Hopefully going to change this background a little bit. A lot of people noticed that the cardboard was out of my windows whenever, my I, question. <laughs> whenever I came back. Uh, and it wasn't it wasn't because BRS paid for it or anything. I was just like, if I'm going to be on Bull Creek Supplies YouTube channel, I should probably like, you know, freshen up the space a little bit. But uh, this this area has been long overdue for a uh, a renovation for sure. But so does this mean that the cardboard is not coming back? It is not coming back. No. <laughs> okay. you actually, so people were, were asking you to, to cut up and post pieces of cardboard, right? Yes. I actually sent out probably 25 <laughs> different pieces of okay. cardboard that I signed, you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I love that. That's funny. Yeah. Um, and so, so you, you, you worked, you moved on, you had your, your channel. How long was your channel running? Well, how long has your channel been running? My channel, the channel itself has been running since 2009. Now, it wasn't always called Bahama Lama Coral. I think it was Remy Radio, the Remy Radio show or something like that. So I had posted some like radio stuff there that I've done in the past. And all of that is either private or enlisted at this point. So you can't see okay. it. There's but a proposal video on there. There is. Yes. That's yeah. how I proposed to my wife. I left that up uh, strategically for when I started to get a, a, approach that monetization level, as all YouTubers okay, do. Yeah, yeah. That one, for whatever reason, still gets views. So I <laughs> left it up there just in case. Um, and it's it's fine now. I don't think it's mm. too far off the beaten path. And people see it's like 2000. What was that? 2012 or 11 or something like that. Mm uh so they're like oh okay well this is this is old but i've got a bunch of other radio videos that were up previous but i didn't want to start from scratch for whatever reason so i just changed yeah. the name and i think i had like 600 subscribers whenever i changed the name over to bahama Lama coral and then i started really posting videos in late 2018 early 19. And then I think it was probably middle to late 2019 that I really started taking it seriously. And then the pandemic happened, which allowed me to really ha hammer down on it and and really get like a video out a week. So, um, OK. And so it's so about three years, pure llama coral goodness, basically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. And you talked about you did a video, I don't know, a year. I think it was must have been not six months ago, 18 months ago at the start of the year when you were setting out your plan to the channel and then things changed because you started doing the BRS stuff. Yeah. Um, so we'll come on to kind of plant the uh, channel plans in a second, but how did the BRS gig come around? I think they just, did they just contact you out the blue and just say, do you want to come and work with us? Yeah. So they had been, obviously they had been in like acquisition mode for quite a while and they were, they had just, I think they had just announced the Neptune um, acquisition. And at that time that they were asking about me being on, they were asking about, I think, Matthew, my first fish tank as well. Mm -hmm. They had feelers out for that. And then they had the their feelers out for that whole um, uh, the reef pack. So they had like I think 50 yeah. ish reefers yeah. that, you know, got some <laughs> sort of stipend every month for equipment and things like that. And I just it felt like a lot. You know, I felt like, mm. oh. They're, they're like really beefing up here on social media and this is going to be like a good thing and uh, i know you had talked to jim about our telegram about mm. um my consultation with him just to see how yeah, he felt yeah. about it and i, I was, <laughs> was surprised. as surprised as <laughs> everybody thinks you know um for him to be like yeah you should totally do it and so with that endorsement and a couple other people that I had talked to, I was like, you know, I can't pass this opportunity up. I'm going to try it out. Randy had reached out to me a couple of times and he was like, let's talk. Maybe we can figure something out about, um, you know, what you want to what you want to do on the channel. We definitely want to pick you up. So, you, you know, you're doing stuff. We'll send you some products. You can talk about the products. And, you know, I talked to Thomas several times about okay. how he how he does his videos and 
So you'll see a definite similarity between our videos, but only I'm less enthusiastic than he is. <laughs> not sure because it's possible I... to be more enthusiastic. <laughs> I'm just not having the time of my life talking about uh, huh? Aquamax protein skimmers. Nothing against Aquamax no, no, or no. skimmers in general, but I'm just, you know, I'm more of a, I'm more of a narrative kind of guy. I'm more of a storyline kind of guy and not, not necessarily the product guy, so. Indeed, and I kind of thought because they, they, there were a few people. There was Jen, there was yourself, uh, Matthew, and Thomas. I think that's it. And uh, I kind of uh, so with Matthew, he does his uh, his beginner friendly stuff, which is really what he was doing before. Yeah. Thomas always came. I, I didn't ever watch Thomas's old channel. I think it was a freshwater channel, but he he's always done the product stuff. And when you signed up, I figured because Jen was doing like really short, snappy top tens, this sort of thing, punchy tips. And I thought that they might be getting you to do sort of Remy stuff. And uh, you, obviously you did the macro and all that sort of stuff. But I wonder if they might get you to basically carry on your channel, but yeah. just with a BRS stamp on it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I was hoping that that was, that was going to be the case too. And right. I was kind of told, let's let's try out the product thing for six months to a year. We'll see how that goes. So we didn't make it that far before. I think, I think it was Randy that kind of was like, all right, let's maybe explore another avenue. Okay. Um, because I, I don't know, I was, it was, it was stressful. It was like <laughs> writing a dissertation on a product every single week and mm. it wasn't the most fun in the world. And, um, so yeah, it, it was just, I was, their lack of enthusiasm was there. So we actually had come up with an, a, a plan. We'd mm. come up with this whole plan, my Avenue, my lane, what I was going to do. It would, it would really cut back on the amount of shooting that I would have to do. I'd go to a city of, a month and shoot a bunch of tanks and a bunch of hobbyist tanks and things like that. And, um, it was out there. And unfortunately just due to costs, like everything costs so much these days. And I think mm. from an equipment standpoint on bulk reef supply and on, honestly, every manufacturer right now is suffering the chip stuff and you know, yeah. everything is more expensive. So they didn't think it'd be a good look. And so I think Ryan, who was totally on board with this idea, uh, I think he was just like, you know, at, at this point, we've been kind of leading you on for the last like two or three months. We'll just we'll just cut you loose and you can do whatever you want. So uh, that's when I decided to do and relaunch the uh, the llama channel. And I think the idea is still viable. Um, the travel and all that expense stuff is really all that would need to be covered. So if you're a sponsor and you would like to sponsor <laughs> the travel expenses for my next thing. No, I'm just joking. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's ultimately where the channel, my channel will go as well. Just getting to know, I mean, you've seen, uh, if you've watched my channel, you've seen a lot of tank tours. Mm -hmm. And I think that, I think that we can, even if, even if you're the most experienced reaper in the world, the weird thing that some hobbyists do, it's, it's so bizarre to me sometimes when you see like Chummingham is running mm. a 450 gallon reef and he's only dosing calquasser and it's but he's got this co2 scrubber and the, all these like crazy contraptions that he's set up on his own you know and it's just it it really gets you to think and i think that's the basis of my channel is to empower reefers to step outside the box you know think mm. of things a little bit differently and even if you don't subscribe to another reefers methods, maybe you can take one or two things. Maybe it's like I clean my tank with some random sponge that they found at Walmart and that's your new method of cleaning. You know what I mean? It's those are the, those are the things that I feel like the, the hobby really, really needs because as we, as a lot of these, uh, bigger, uh, reefing outlets and things like that, uh, focus on products and, and that side of thing, we need mm. story. Like we, we all need to connect on some way. And we can totally do that through technology. So that's kind of the long answer to why I am where I am right now. So <laughs> as far so as the BRS stuff goes. Gotcha. And because the Chummingham's Reef video was really interesting because it is a very unusual. So it looked like a very unusual setup. It's almost like a, a trough rather than a tank because it's a, a low level. Yeah. Uh, but and he, I, I would if you'd have told me uh, if, that my pH had peaked to, up to nine, I'd be panicking and thinking <laughs> I need to put some vinegar in there to get it down a bit. But uh -huh. 
his tank is insane. And some of the experiments he does with slicing open the, the scully skeleton and turning on its side and growing a, a new completely different scully, all these sorts of weird things that there's just no way I'd be ever I'd ever be brave enough to do. Yeah. But just it was it was really interesting to see how different how people do different things. There's a thousand ways to achieve the same goals because you're ultimately trying to do the same thing with your tank. Yeah. But there are different ways of doing it. So it's interesting to see that. <clears throat> yeah. And it was fun for me to to visit his house in particular because it's Chicago. So mm -hmm. it's it's a big city. He's got a he's got a smaller house and the fact that that tank filled up the majority of the room. I mean, <laughs> Uh, Tyler uh, inland, inland underscore reef on Instagram, uh, who helps me shoot sometimes. He he takes great macro shots. Uh, mm -hmm. We're having to fight for real estate in the room to get around the tank because there's, it's it's a tank room like it's bigger than any bed you've ever slept on. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So uh, it was it was just fun to see. And then it you know he's got these crazy ideas. So I don't know how much you've followed him on Instagram or he uh, there's a hole in the wall when we were there. And he just randomly decided to put this this uh, drop off tank in his kitchen on his huge stand. I mean, the stand must be five and a half feet tall. Can you imagine throwing sixty five gallons up on a five and a half foot stand? Mm. I mean, it's it was that, that was it all the scullies and the acantophilias and yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, like yeah. a see through, so you know yeah. you can look through the kitchen and see what's in the other room. I don't know, you know, those, those crazy ideas and it makes you want to go for it. I don't know. Yeah, it's for me, very creative. Yeah, for me, sometimes mm. I just need to see somebody do something wild for me to go, <laughs> you know what? It didn't it didn't affect him. He's fine. So mm. let's throw a hole in the wall, you know? <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, it was very, very different. And I like that it was all connected to the same tank. So there's no extra maintenance apart from a bit of cleaning on it. It's not like you have to run a, a whole separate tank for that. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, you mentioned the BRS stuff. So you kind of you, you were doing the product stuff and weren't really enjoying it because uh, it's not your thing. And, and I find so I do product reviews. Probably ten percent of my videos are product reviews. And when I do them, because they're quite occasional, I quite like doing it because I get to properly break down the product, have a look through everything, and hopefully tell everybody everything that you're not going to know just by looking at it in, in a box or yeah. talking to a member of staff or whatever. So I quite like doing that, but I think the idea of doing it all the time, they're not, they're, I'm the same as you, it's not something that I kind of feel passionate about. And that was sort of, it sounds like it took sort of six months and that became a bit of a drag because that was all you were doing basically. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And, and, and like you, I mean, it's not to say that I'll never do another product review. I just feel like there's more, there's, there's people who are more qualified at doing that than I am. You know, you for instance, or, or Jim, uh, Telegram just busting down lights to mm, you know you buy it, opening them up yeah <laughs> buy an eight hundred dollar light you yeah. know it's the same similar with the scully slicing a scully in half you know it's it's like well this could die um, but yeah. Uh, it, yeah it's the same thing I just feel like there's people that are way more qualified than I am about you know actually the logistics and the technology surrounding a lot of these products um, so yeah it's not that I'm opposed to it. I guess all the time, but and there's also another fine line you have to ride when you're a YouTuber, and that's how much of a video are you going to devote to a client? You know, at that mm. point, mm. you know, if uh, if Ecotech comes knocking and they're like, "Hey, here's 50 free lights," it's hard to explain that to to uh, to the fan base. You know what I mean? Like, oh, they just kind uh, of just gave me fifty thousand dollars in lights. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I think you know with this new the uh we've always been very open on the from a radio perspective uh mm. and being transparent with the products that you endorse because we endorse yeah, a yeah. bunch of products on on the air and it's very evident that we are being paid to talk about mm -hmm. the you know the product or whatever but i i'll i mean i'll i'll say it there's a lot of radio people and i guess the youtubers as well that will talk about products with positive light and they don't even use them so I I try as best as I possibly can to stay on the I actually like this product. That's why I'm endorsing it. Like I use RPM. I use Fritz Salt Blue Box. I get asked questions about that all the time. And honestly, you can use whatever salt you want. But that's the one that works for me. And that's mm. the one I actually go to my LFS and buy every other month. I get that same box. I know that if I can if I've got any issues with alkalinity or whatever, I can always just send the batch number off to Fritz. They'll send me the results from, you know, whatever oh, that batch produced. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So 
it's 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 nice to have that that double checking and you know a lot of the a lot of the i have a myriad of things i'm a huge ai prime fan i don't know okay, i just yeah, like yeah, yeah. i just like oh, the prime you got three in view, yeah actually, so. they're just uh they're just a great little light and they're super manip i can manipulate them on my phone and and i just i like ai products a lot so yeah i have a bunch of them it's a, it's a lot easier to do or well it's very difficult to make a review about a product if you don't like it <laughs> i've yeah. never done that um, and I've been offered stuff that I know I'd be, I'd make a video and I'd be like, it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it just, it's, it's so much easier when it's a good piece of kit, especially something like the AI um, primes there, you know, that everybody has got experience with them. Everybody knows they're good. Um, but so, so those are kind of some of the bad, oh, actually first off, Peter T, thank you very much for the, uh, the, the, the super chat. He says, Remy is such a cool lad. Love his content. Oh, thanks Peter. Um, and uh, you said so we talked about kind of the bad part of um, of BRS, but what was? Oh, actually, first off, we that, that wasn't your full time job. That was a, a side hustle, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you had a uh, you had an editor. Was that absolutely awesome? It was. It was kind of nice. I mean, Blaine's an awesome dude. I've known Blaine for a couple of years now. King Tide mm -hmm. Cordles. He's actually got his own YouTube channel. He uh, after I made a video about how to be a YouTuber in the reef space. I, I don't know. I just said you know here's the basics to break it down and actually got a couple of guys that started youtube channels because of that uh mm -hmm. that video and he was one of them and he just kept with it so okay. um yeah blaine was kind of brought on because brs didn't have a free editor normally what what would happen is every every one of the talent would send their stuff to brs headquarters and then that team would take care of the edit mm -hmm. on that um, I think Matthew actually does. He does do his own videos, though. Yeah. Okay. Um, but if there was any of us that had a full time job or whatever on top of it, then they would pay for the editor. So they didn't have any free ones. I was like, well, Blaine could probably do it. So, uh, yeah, we worked together a lot on those edits. Um, we kind of ended up with our own little system eventually. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I forgot the original question. <laughs> well, so I, was, I was asking if it was awesome because I, I was thinking about this earlier and I thought if I had a if I had an because the thing I like most is uh, thinking about what I'm going to say uh, and doing research all that sort of stuff and then just talking about stuff yeah and the editing it's kind of I, I enjoy it because I want to make it my own there's certain things that I like to do and it's kind of you, you end up having inadvertently a signature on your channel of how things work and it just feels like a, a reef talk or a Bahama Lama video so I like that and I don't know if I'd want to let go of control of that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the, if there was one part I could drop, although I do enjoy it, it would be the editing because it can be a bit of a drag sometimes and it can take a yeah. long time. So was it, was it amazing having an, an editor or was it kind of... It was great because he would, he would basically do the bulk of the edits and then I could come through and I could fine tune all the little okay. like Remy okay. things that I would do, you know? So um, yeah, it's... It's nice, but like you said, it's hard to relinquish control of that. But mm. from a time aspect, I feel like if you were going to have an editor, having them do those bulk, rough cut, whatever, and then you can go through, that helps out so much. That was uh, a great help. Uh, for me, I don't, I like editing, but if, if I really wanted to do videos the way that I saw them in my head, I might be editing for a month or two yeah. at a time <laughs> and you, you can only you can only do so much right so um yeah blaine was great and uh you know i don't know if you watch any other outside um outside of the reefing world youtube channels but peter mckinnon is one of my favorites yeah. he's a yeah. canadian and uh he's, he's got photography right he's photography videography uh that whole realm mm. but he's got a great editor who just knows him you know what I mean? Like right, okay. you almost have to be connected at the hip with your editor, especially right. if you're a personality. Like if you have a, a fine, a finite way of doing things, I think it really helps that they're like in your presence. So it's good that he's got uh, Kirk is his name in in his studio with him, you know, to kind of bounce stuff off of him. So, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the goal, right? You know, to get it, get his gets so many subscribers that you just need an editor. <laughs> no, yeah, but uh, so there's uh, Marquez Brownlee. I watch a ton of YouTube. Oh yeah, do you, do you know Marquez Brownlee? MKBHD. Yeah. Yep, yep. So he, he does tech reviews, all that sort of stuff, mobile phones and all that. And I watched a video with him recently. There's a, a channel called Colin and Samir, 
who go around. Uh, it's, it's all about the, the creator economy, as they call it, and it, uh, interviewing editors, that are YouTubers. They're really interesting guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they talk to him, and he edits all his stuff still. And there's, there, so there's a, do you know Mr. Beast? You must know Mr. Beast. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So, uh, so Mr. Beast, the, I watched both of them, and Mr. Beast does all of his, uh, does just pa- passes over everything because he's like, well, I need to be out there doing other things. I don't need to be wasting my time doing the edit. Yeah. Whereas MKBHD, who's got a, a very specific style, um, likes to do it all himself, and he doesn't want to let go of control. And, yeah. and when you watch his, I've picked up a couple of things that I've started stealing from his uh, his editing. So he does these bits where he's like talking to the camera and he's doing a, a conclusion and getting all deep about something. And you just start to zoom slowly in on him. Yep. I noticed it the other day for the first time, and I've been watching him for years. And I was like, "That's brilliant." <laughs> yeah, it, it always it always uh, makes me wonder if this is the only job that I had. How much could I devote to it? You know, how much mm. more could I devote to it? Because he, he's got an amazing studio. He's got all these spaces. He got a robot. You know, all yeah. of these different things in his space. And I'm sure there's millions of dollars sunk into that. But mm. you kind of wonder if everything went away and I could just focus on this one thing, what I could do with it. But, you know, that's definitely I mean, not, I- the, not the position that, that I'm in at this point. No, ours is a small niche, isn't it, the hobby? There, aside from uh, Coralfish 12G, who's not really... Um, he's kind of a niche of his own. And he's more of a, a sort of a, a general YouTuber who just happens to talk about fish and corals and stuff that apart from him there isn't really an awful lot um uh, of big youtubers in the hobby and i think brs is by far and away the biggest with probably quarter to a million subscribers yeah. actually that was one thing i was going to ask you about so because uh, when brs took over or whatever it was uh, marine depot mm-hmm. they started off with uh, marine depot was the second channel that now seems to have stopped and there's no been no b there's no brs2 as i'll call it videos for a while i think you started uploading to BRS two, and then did you move across to BRS one as well, or what, how did that work? What was what was the score with that? So all I did was I I turned in the finished video to mm. a server, and then they put up whatever they want, wherever they wanted okay. to put up. So I'm not 100 percent sure on what that was. It was really I think it was really because Ryan and Randy didn't necessarily want to relinquish the main channel of that, and I get that. You've got new mm. people coming on, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, obviously they'd built up that channel to what it is today. Mm. And so what are we going to do with this Marine Depot YouTube channel? Well, we might as well just, you know, toss up a bunch of product reviews and things like that on it. So that's, that's what ended up happening. I was well out of, like, I don't know what the philosophy is at this point. So. Okay. Fair enough. So, and we talked a bit about the, the, the bad side of, uh, of of the the stuff you did with BOS, but what about the good side? What were the kind of the, the best things of doing that project? Uh, getting a box of products like once a month was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and was there anything? The, was there anything that you particularly liked? Any really good stuff that stands out? Um, as far as products go, yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, I didn't really do anything that off of the wall. Like, I, I, there's a there's a kit by Tropic Marin. I know Tropic Marin's kind of like not good words anymore, but as far as salt goes, but. Mm uh they had a kit with the, with everything in it i just thought that was one of the coolest things because you know we okay. have the the api test kits and and those that i don't know how well regarded they are but that's definitely like the first thing you get when you get into the hobby right you get all the little vials and little api saltwater test kits or whatever but this this seemed a little bit more legit because it was from tropic marin uh, yeah. or tropic marin uh i thought that one was cool but other than that it was really like i I mean, this was this was fun to get. Um, <laughs> oh, cool! Yeah, very nice. <laughs> so this is that new. The, it's the newer, you know, meant for saltwater or aquariums in general. So I got a mm. par meter, lights. Uh, I mean, Ecotech Radions, uh, AI Hydra. I'm trying to think of the other stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, the the product side was awesome of just receiving them because part of the agreement was that i got to keep them because it was oh, cool. yeah, more cool. of a hassle to have to send them back mm-hmm. and all that kind yeah, of stuff yeah, yeah. so i actually had one guy uh bust my chops on the youtube uh, channel yesterday who was like said something to the effect of so you were loyal to brs and then you weren't loyal to brs and then you just took all their products sweet awesome <laughs> and, like, and i responded and i was like it's good uh, i said something like if you must know it was part of the agreement and yeah, then i yeah. said something like but it, but you were at the negotiation for the contract right 
just being so, kind of passive aggressive <laughs> I, I got a similar comment a couple of months ago someone was I, I made a product view I can't remember what it was but someone uh, effectively was saying you shouldn't be keeping that you should be giving it away to other people yeah and I didn't reply I, I, t- I try to ignore um, comments like that because I'm just the bad side is going to come out of me it's not going to reflect well on me basically yeah but m- what, what I was thinking is well actually making those videos okay I get a free piece of equipment I work quite hard to do that. It takes a lot of time, a lot more time to make a product review than it does a normal review because I've got to yep. research it. I've got to look at all the bumps I get, sort of separate what uh, f- uh, the, the truth from the marketing speak and all this sort of stuff, actually break down the useful things that people need to know. It takes a long time. Yep. So I don't feel guilty at all about keeping a piece of kit that might be up a few hundred quid or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I like that you kind of, you've you got both ends. You've you, you got the, uh, no, it's not fair that you were keeping it. And yeah. now it's not fair um, that uh, that you're ditching them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, it, it's part of it. And like you said, I mean, you hit the nail on the head when when you say it takes so much longer to do a product video, or it just takes so much longer to incorporate product into a video, especially if you're you know, sponsored, whatever it's whether that's you know CJ or Fritz or BRS or whoever. Uh, it takes a little bit more time and effort to do that, and. Honestly, the, a lot of people don't know these videos take like six to eight hours sometimes to make. I mean, it can it can be a long process uh, to make just a simple video. I'm kind of dreading the edit that that lays in front of me with, you know, the update for next week. So just just how it goes. You know, if you want to if you want to take on this and if you want to do this or you think you've got what it takes, then put out your own videos, you know, start making exactly. your own video. Free products may come to your door as well, but know and that it's it- not just that. Well, so there, there are a couple of things So people, most people, or at least I think anyway, most people who do this don't get into it because they want, Oh God, I really would love to get a free yeah. light or whatever. That's, I'm not sure some people do, um, but it's not just the, the six or eight hours it takes or sometimes even longer to make a video. It's the three years that you've taken to build your channel up and establish it to the point where it's legitimate and you've got a reputation and you know you've got a uh, hundred videos behind you all those sorts of things and that's yeah. blood sweat and tears every day that, that 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 you know people don't see which is understandable but yep yep that's exactly right but this this is just going to turn into a, a youtuber moaning session um so there, there's a, there's a couple of things coming up in the, in the comments i'm going to turn to first off jacob wright thank you very much for the uh, the super chat and he says uh, hello from the 618 what's the 618 that's an area code here near us. That's uh, okay. That's uh, Southern Illinois. Gotcha. All righty. And uh, four ninety nine for a gallon of gas. Yeah. So at the moment in the UK, fuel prices are going crazy. It's almost double what it was two or three months ago before uh, the war started, basically before Russia invaded. Is, mm-hmm. is it the same story where you guys are? Oh yeah. You, you, yep. Oh really? Because you, you you guys um, America uh, creates or drills a lot of oil uh, yourself. So I wondered. If you might just be, you know, uh, inflation proof on that, but no. Yeah, we. Uh, so it's weird because Illinois and Missouri are are uh, St. Louis is right on the border, and I actually live on the Illinois side of the river. So it, okay. it's a, it's still a, it's considered a St. Louis suburb that I live in, um, but on the Illinois side, say for instance, gas will be five dollars and twenty cents, and if you go to the Missouri side, it'll be like four eighty. Or something so a lot of okay. people just fill up their tanks in missouri <laughs> yeah, yeah. instead of in illinois but yeah it's it's definitely well i think we're riding the same kind of wave you guys are yeah and so electricity is going the same as well so i've got an electric car and i was feeling smug for about two minutes because i don't have to pay for petrol but now electricity is going up and it's <laughs> it's no better i'm no better off um what was I going to say? So, oh, yeah. So the other thing about BRS then, you, did you, I mean, it sounds like you were just kind of doing your own thing and there wasn't much kind of involvement, but did you get to kind of talk to, I think Randy was your conduit. Did you talk to Randy and Ryan much? Yeah. Yeah. I, I talked to Randy more than Ryan. I talked to Ryan at yeah. the beginning and the end, uh, okay. but Randy was, uh, he was great. He's awesome. Mm, um, mm. You know, he's been doing this for years and I think he learned under Ryan's wing with how to present, uh, reefing material on youtube so mm. uh and i'm used to that in the radio world we call them air checks where we basically go into our boss's office and we listen to snippets of the show and then he tells okay. us how yeah. bad we are um <laughs> <laughs> sorry constructive criticism yeah. <laughs> uh but i i received that from randy probably on a weekly basis so right okay. uh it was good it was good to learn from him and then all of a sudden out of the blue one day he's like hey i'm uh i'm gonna be uh 
moving on out. I was like, okay. So yeah. he's, he's, uh, I guess he's heading up a, a YouTube channel for AR 15s or, yeah, you know, high powered rifles. And, and I think the company that he works for makes accessories for those. I could be wrong. I'm totally speaking offhand here. I'm not 100% mm. sure, but he, uh, he basically was dubbed the guy to bring their YouTube channel from nothing to something. And I think that he's got it some pretty good yeah. experience with that so because the, the the biggest compliment i could pay to to randy was that after i hadn't appreciated him until after he left uh, and i always just thought like him and rand him and ryan were the i always really enjoyed their videos and i thought they worked really well together but that really came to to the fore when he left because for a start ryan's done a lot less lately so i guess he was dri ryan uh, randy was driving that because that, that was his job yeah but since he's gone it's just it's the the the, the ryan and randy stuff it's just, that missing has been a really big thing and it's kind of like i miss it now and i want it back <laughs> yeah yeah it's a, that's another thing that we in radio where like i worked with a co-host for 10 years and mm. then he got let go and it's just different vibes you know you just mm, you yeah, get yeah, yeah. I have a new co-host and she's awesome and it's just different though. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. different. It's different vibes, how you play off of somebody. Uh, you know, I think Randy filled in for a lot of the stuff that, that Ryan wasn't good at and vice versa. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan filled in for a lot of the stuff that Randy wasn't good at. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's a good team in my mind. That's like a perfect yin and yang. You know what I mean? They, they really yeah, yeah. complimented each other a lot in that regard when it came to, on air presence and being on videos and things like that. And when one of those goes away and doesn't really get filled back in again, um, and I don't know that you can, like I'm trying to think of all the people in my mind that could potentially be uh, alongside Ryan in the, in the video world there. And I just, I don't know. Uh, they, they'd have a better handle on that than I would, but I just, I can't mm. think of anybody offhand that would want to leave what they're doing now or you know to 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 be that randy for for ryan mm, yeah completely it's he, he was kind of in a unique situation um and there are there are people in the chat looking for gossip remy <laughs> john wright wants to know why what's the inside scoop why is Rand ryan gone so quiet <laughs> honestly my own personal opinion he's just too busy like yeah, i figured that <laughs> it, it really it really it was whenever we did talk toward the end it was very very quick, very quick. Yeah, you know, okay. got got other things to do. There's a lot of things going on in the world, and and he's the guy. He's the point person. I mean, I can't imagine, and I don't know. I don't know exactly what's happening, but I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm the guy that knows the reefing world, and there's a lot of people above me now that have no idea about the saltwater world. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So he's the guy that everybody's going to, not just all the people under him, but all the people above him as well. So I would imagine he's just getting he's getting it from all sides and he's just super busy, which, you know, like we just said, videos take a long time to make mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's difficult to do that. I know he's, he's put some stuff out. He spoke at Reef of Palooza not too long ago. Yeah. So that was, that was good. But yeah. I, I always wondered before that even, because he was, he, he just did so much stuff and it always felt like I, I couldn't understand how he could keep so many plates spinning. And I guess maybe part of that was that he had Randy to, do a lot of the the behind the scenes work so maybe ryan just turns up uh, and uh, and talks for a little bit and yeah uh, and so he doesn't have to spend too much time on it yeah. um we also have queen of reef in the house who says uh, you deserve <laughs> <new> products <laughs> that is you true. would say that's definitely so you're, you're biased <laughs> as well but <laughs> Um, but yeah, so uh, so that's kind of that's all the BRS stuff, and I'm sure there'll be other things that I'll catch up with on the comments that that, uh, that are, they're asking about. That. But might, that, I that add, bit... might I add? Might add that there there's literally no hard feelings there, and I I, I no, think no. I think I reiterated that enough in my relaunch video that like everybody there is awesome. Everybody that I worked with was awesome. It just it was like I said, wasn't the right time. Just didn't work out, and that's fine. At least I did it. You know, at least I. Mm. I I did it. I learned from it. Now I can be better for it. So, yeah, uh, take you that. absolutely did the right thing going for it. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, they, they they started this reef pack thing. There was a, a a video that Ryan and Randy made that was they were saying, look, if you've got a, a YouTube channel or an Instagram page with a a big following, get in touch and let us know. And I dropped them a line as well, but because I'm abroad, um, I think they couldn't work out um, how to how to make that work. Um, but it, I. When I saw that, I thought I really want to know what they uh, what they want to do because it sounds exciting. And BRS 
I've been watching BOS for years that I absolutely love them. I always talk about it on this um, on the channel that I think they're awesome. So I think to, to have been a part of that yeah. was pretty was pretty cool. Um, what else was I going to say? So yeah, you mentioned uh, the talk that uh, Ryan did at Reef of Palooza, and you did a talk as well at Reef Works. Aquashella. Aquashella was it? Right. Yeah, okay. A couple so of how, times. How, yeah. Okay. So what was that? I mean, because you're you're. A, you're a professional talker <laughs> so i guess it was slightly easier but that that feels like it because making a video for youtube is easy you might get uh, you know ten thousand people watching it but you don't see them w was it uh, a completely different experience doing the the talk yeah uh i i think my last talk that i ever gave was in college <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> for uh you know for a grade or whatever public speaking 101 i don't know what it was but uh yeah i just it all came kind of flooding back to me i was like oh i need a powerpoint now i need to like what am i actually going to talk about that's interesting that nobody else is talking about mm -hmm. so i really revolved i revolved my first talk at aqua shell around story and how a lot of a lot of the corals that we have have a story uh why are you in the hobby i i related it all towards a watch which is super weird um and i think it might have been a little bit too abstract for for the the crowd to really pick up on but i my second hobby is i, I like to collect watches okay yeah, yeah and uh one of the the initial story that i started off with was my grandfather had an omega Speedmaster, and it was broken and it didn't work anymore you couldn't see through the crystal and i didn't know what i was doing and i was 18 so i was like well i'll make you know 100 bucks and i'll sell it on ebay well, I ended up selling it on eBay, but it didn't sell for a hundred dollars. It sold for like eight hundred dollars. Oh, really? <laughs> Broken. Uh, okay. So I definitely made a mistake, and I really talked about uh, how that story is kind of in all of our lives. Whether you started with reefing or keeping fish because your your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa or it just kind of ran in the family. Uh, or you've got a coral like the Scully. I actually bought a Scully from Ryan Chummingham's Reef three or four years ago at a frag mm -hmm. swap, one that was cut from uh, one of his Scullies that he cut. And okay. so well, I so he chopped it in half. Oops. He chopped, chopped it in. He, yeah, he chopped one of his larger ones in, I think it, he chopped it in eights, and I bought one of the oh, eight. Really? And it had that become a circle again? <clears throat> And then I chopped that one in half right. and okay. I sent one to the inappropriate reefer and he killed it. So, <laughs> <Smoky>. <laughs> so I still have mine, but, but it's just like, it's really cool to, I think story brings it, 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 it delivers. I, I think it delivers kind of an emotional and a, a bond with why we are all doing this. And that's, that was kind of my first, my first talk had to do with that and okay. i think the second talk had to do with thinking outside of the box or going down a path that you wouldn't normally go down just to try it out because i feel like I, i've always been of the mind where if another human can do it then i can at least give it a try and see if mm. it's something that i could do too now it, elon musk is not a human so if you mm. were to go down that route maybe not but you know if if uh if somebody else like there's countless people that are breeding clownfish so it's like there's got to be a method out there and there's no clear there still isn't really a clear cut way on how to do it on youtube and so i tried my best and i think i need to revisit that and hone it in a little bit more um but yeah it, the, being in front of a, a captive audience like that is different because we do that we do that here in st louis probably on a i don't know weekly bi-weekly basis especially over the summer we have a lot of concerts so we usually go up on stage beforehand and be like, what's up, guys? You decided to be here. I can't hear you. You decided to be here. Uh, you know, you're up there for like 30 seconds. And that might yeah. be in front of 100 people. That might be in front of 10,000 people. Uh, but being up in front of somebody for 40 minutes is, uh, is a little bit more of a task. So, But it was fun. And I'd do it again. And uh, I've, every time I do it, I learn something new. What's interesting about Aquashella is that you have a lot of people in your audience that are freshwater people that don't oh, have really? any okay. that don't have salt water because i feel like in my mind aquashella kind of leans more freshwater whether it wants to or not uh it's just a bigger it's just a bigger market you know freshwater mm. is such a such a bigger market than saltwater is so mm, it makes sense size, yeah. <laughs> but it's it's so fascinating because i am not really in the slightest 
interested in freshwater. I did that, you know, <laughs> when I was a kid and and not to not to belittle it by any means. Mm, I'm just mm. I wouldn't go to a freshwater talk and the freshwater no. guys are coming to the saltwater things. And I think that that's oh, really? so cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah like it's, it's, it's the same. It's not that freshwater saltwater is better than fresh. It's different. And I, yeah. I'm the same as you. It just it just I did have freshwater tanks, but it, it doesn't do anything for me. Um, but you mentioned something uh, a second ago there that uh, segues uh, or ties in with this question from Journey into the Reef. As you transition back into your own channel, what storylines from your own reef are you most looking forward to pursuing? I think the the one that I really am excited for is the Uno and Dos adventure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the two the two sole survivors from a couple different clutches. Uh, one of them is from a very she's world renowned Kathy Leahy. She's uh, she's a breeder here in St. Louis, which. <laughs> It's crazy to think that we've got a woman who is in this area in the middle of the United States breeding marine fish. Mm. She was the first mm. one to captively raise or breed. And I don't know if she she raised the egg. I don't know if she actually had the fish spawn, but Coral Beauties. Um, oh, she was cool. the first one to like bring one of those up from egg to. Mm. I hope I'm not like totally messing that up, but um, she she had clownfish and they laid every two weeks. And so you'll see her in the very first video that I get or that I do of the clownfish video where she brings over a tile just filled with clownfish eggs. Right, yeah, okay. And so Uno is from that batch uh, or that clutch. And then Dose is from my pair. So I, they have not, they can see each other through the glass, but they've never <laughs> like interacted with each other. So I think that that's going to be a fun storyline to story for the modern age. Yeah. Put them in a, <laughs> put them in the same tank, see how they do. That's, I think that's probably going to happen here in the, in the next like two or three weeks. I've got another like holding tank that I'm setting up while I can put everything from the lagoon. Cause that's the first tank that's going to get broken down and moved. Um, so I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks we can we can have some footage of that. But that's one of them. Um, I think uh, continuing the, with the two clownfish that I have that are still spawning every two weeks, uh, they're just having a lot of uh, extra food as they eat their okay. young. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think uh, the weeping willow is a fun one. Uh, the scoli that I still have is a fun one. We could probably cut that up again. Um, I don't know. Just I think for me, starting from starting back on the basics everything for the most part that i have in this room i set up in a rush mm. the, f the first one was the frag tank when we first moved into this house um i just had to get it up like i had to get the tank up and running so that i could put the corals in there and i didn't do it how i probably would have liked to do it so mm. starting fresh will be another storyline that we go to as well Okay, and so and you so. mentioned this the uh, the lady with the um, I forgot the name Leahy I can't come over Kathy yeah Kathy yeah yeah you mentioned her so the, the kind of the um, the coral beauty breeder and that, that's some of the the videos that that you do that I enjoy the most are meeting these um, interesting people who do things that you you need to know you don't need to know but it's, it's fascinating to find out about it in the hobby. How, how do you kind of because you do loads of videos where you do tank tours and all these sorts of things how, how do you get in touch with these people do, do they approach you or do you just know them from the local area um for the most part i have no problem reaching out to somebody mm -hmm. uh and they I, it, it's a rare occasion when someone like turns me down and that's not to that's not just that's not because like they want to be featured on the channel but mm. i think it's just surprising in a lot of cases uh, especially for Kathy who's not one she doesn't necessarily want a YouTube channel she doesn't necessarily yeah. want accolades she just wants to do her thing and then somebody wants to document it being me uh, but she's got a whole operation I I would love to visit her house mm. and see what's going on there uh, because not only does she you know breed and spawn and all that amazing marine fish but she also has to feed those so you get into organisms that are smaller than rotifers that you have to feed these guys oh, really? <laughs> um so she's having to make cultures of those and that's interesting and i think the the fun part with her is that she does it all out of like i don't know like a, a water bottle like a purified water bottle that you would get she'll hack off the lid put mm. an air stone in it and boom yeah. she's got a she's She's got a breeding ground for whatever she needs to to grow up and feed to her her young fry that whatever she's uh, breeding. But could you talk about with Uno and Dose? You you having to get up at like two three o'clock in the morning to feed them? 
it was like yeah. having children, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, you know, I there was a couple a couple nights. I, I don't think that that's def, I don't think that that's a requirement per se. Right. Uh, I think that might have been me overcompensating <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> okay. uh, just because I didn't know what I was doing. The, the, those first couple nights of that, the first clutch hatching was just so exciting. You know, it reminded me of like my one of my first nights in a radio where you're, you're afraid to go off the air. So you don't want to leave the room ever mm. when it's going to run itself and you're fine. It's OK. It's it's nature. It's just going to do its thing. Um, but yeah, uh, I will say that if you are planning on like raising fry, yeah. it's it's good not to have a vacation scheduled in the first like, I don't know, month of those <laughs> fries okay. life because right. you got to be around for evaporation and water changes. Yeah, okay. And that's a very regular thing when it comes to those. And that, that becomes very apparent. Oh, you've also got to, you've also got to tend to your rotifer culture as well, because you know, that's a thing. <laughs> the, the, all these other things that you wouldn't have thought of. And, and there's a, um, uh, there's a guy over in the UK, Jamie Craggs. I don't know if you would have heard of him. He works at the Horniman museum and he's, he's breeding, um, aquapora corals and yeah. uh, and rescuing the or not rescuing but capturing the the, the game eats and and growing from scratch effectively brand new corals yeah and one of the things he found was because they're so microscopic and they're so tiny when uh, when you first uh, when an aquaporous frag starts to grow uh, they get overrun by algae and so he tried to he bought in a load of urchins but they were too big and they just munched through everything so he then had to start breeding urchins so he could get the tiny little uh, baby urchins, and he found that there was a sweet spot in terms of age and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, it's just, there's just like a, a whole train of things that you wouldn't have thought of that suddenly you've got to do. It's not just I'm going to grow this clownfish; it's I've got to grow its food and I've got to do all sorts of other things for it. Yep, Jamie is a uh, is a legend in the U.S. He yeah, is. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he is. He's talked about in a lot of uh, the Richard Ross. Uh, he gives a lot of speeches here. Um, and aquashellas and reef blueses and those kinds of things and jamie's mentioned a lot and really? honestly i would love that that to me like if i knew i was going to be in this house for the next five ten years i would love to create a room and just do that and just try mm. because i feel like that and that that comes up so many times when we're thinking about well gosh we all of us hobbyists we have tech we have tanks we have most of us have access to some sort of controller and if we could just plug in the coordinates for whatever that came from in Indonesia, like the acro came from in Indonesia, just plug in the the lunar cycle there, keep it in a dark room, let it go. Like how how awesome would it be for even 10% of hobbyists to have their own acro room where they're just harvesting mm. eggs? You know what I mean? That it just to me that that gives me goosebumps to think about like how much of a change hobbyists could make if we really wanted to and I, and and I think I'm the perfect candidate because I'm not a scientist I'm not a marine biologist mm. but if I can end up if I can do it if I can program program my apex to run a lunar cycle based on Indo or Thailand or Australia or whatever um and that seems easy enough you know if we could all just share those those uh you know parameters I think yeah, it's, because, that that would be pretty amazing. There, there must be not a recipe, but certain steps that you have to follow. And I, from my understanding of it, is that understanding, working out how to do it in the first place was very difficult. But now, the problem he has is it's too easy because <laughs> he's <laughs> he spent so much time and so much effort figuring it out. I'd really like to get him on the live stream. Actually, I, want, I should email him and, and or go to the Hollywood Museum because not it's not a million miles for me and uh, and he, and talk about how this actually works because even if i mean 10 percent, even if it was 0.1 percent of, of the of the hobby uh, doing it yeah it could it could be huge so um but yeah i'd, I'd love to know more but I, i'm glad that he was he's kind of made it across to the states I hadn't yeah that, so that's great i've never met him physically no. but i've heard a lot about him so i think that's awesome we had a we had a locally we had a guy in the illinois valley reef club that has uh one of his milliporas just started spawning you know, randomly oh, in his tank one night, and uh, I I tagged Jamie in it. I don't know if they ever hooked yeah. up or, but you know, maybe it was just a random thing. But pretty cool. And that I, I mean, I probably openly weep at my tank if I witness that happening. I can't imagine what that's like in the wild and being mm. on a dive, seeing all of these uh, acropora just 
you know, uh, all these eggs coming up out of nowhere. It's got the gametes. It's got to be so cool to see. There's, it's, I've had a couple of times uh, recently, actually, my, I woke up and my tank was sort of cloudy. I don't know what it was. It's probably snails or something. And I did have before, it was either an urchin or a rock flower anemone with just like smoking. <laughs> and yeah. it just completely clouded the tank. Yeah. Um, but that was just a pain in the backside. And I just had to do <laughs> water changes and change the um, uh, the carbon and just get rid of it. But yeah. it would be cool to have a setup that you can actually st- sort of grow that as well. But um and actually, so Peter T says that you and Than from Tidal Garden should get together and geek out about watches. We have. Watch man, I didn't. Oh, yeah, yeah have we, really? we <laughs> have. Yeah. Uh, at the last Aquashella Orlando, yeah. I, I strolled over to Than at the uh, Top Shelf Aquatics. Like they, they always do like a vendor party for people beforehand. Mm-hmm. And I, I we had the greatest conversation. He was wearing um, a Seiko SRB. I forget the numbers, but. Uh, it was a really cool watch, and we just mm. we had a good talk about watches. And I, Stephanie, uh, Queen of Reef, was a part of that conversation too. And oh, really? we found out that uh, her mother may have sold like a hundred thousand dollar watch for like two thousand dollars. Ah, no, <laughs> it was her dad's okay. old Rolex, and it was like this really, you know, yellow gold green dial kind of thing, and what, what, what they call the John Mayer uh, and right. in, in the Rolex world. But yeah, so I don't know. Watches are watches are fun. I I can't afford. 99.9 percent of them but yeah, i can yeah, dream uh, and it's fun to it's say that's fun to watch you think reef keeping is a, a, a expensive hobby wait to you into watch it. is, is it Patek <laughs> yeah. philippe that are like a hundred grand and they make yep. one a year or something yeah 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 yep. but they, there, there was go on sorry no that's fine uh they yeah uh tax in there uh ap uh they're all in that like we make a watch and it's going to be 50 minimum <laughs> 50k minimum but yeah yeah uh yeah that, that's a whole but, other world i might say my dad we'll get back onto reefing in a second but my, my dad also had he had a rolex years ago and he sold it um not for not very much money at all but he sold it because it was a terrible watch so it didn't keep time at all i don't think he serviced it i think he's supposed to service them so it was yeah. just as a, as a as a time piece it, was, it just wasn't doing his job but it's the one thing he regrets most is getting rid of it because it just would have been would have been cool to have it sort of 40 years on but. for sure yeah um, we've got uh, other questions as well. Affordable reefing says, can you ask Remy if setting up an, uh, if he has any experience setting up an aquaporid dominated tank with display macroalgae refugium, how difficult would that be in terms of trace elements? That's an interesting question. I, 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 I don't know. Um, I would imagine, you know, you're going to get that low nutrient, which is good because you're, if your if your refugium is dominated by macroalgae, uh, I I'd, I'd want to make it a display refugium though almost because you you can get some really cool macroalgae that'll mm. suck up those nutrients uh that'd be that'd be an interesting experiment um i you wouldn't want to deplete it too much obviously i feel like that's one of the things that we've learned over the past couple of years is is uh depleting your tank even with an sps dominated tank of too much nutrients you know you're not going to get the coloration and it might not your corals might not be as happy uh, but I, I honestly, uh, I, I can't answer that question and give you, well, so and give you good part, advice. Part of the question is the, the, uh, that I'm seeing is does macroalgae, uh, display macroalgae suck up trace elements? Do you find you have to supplement trace elements or is it just water changes and it's fine? The only one I, they do, they do suck up a lot of iron. Um, you know, all the iron was it, uh, you know, who would be a good, uh, answer to this question is, uh, tiger boy H2O. He's a wealth of knowledge on this. And he actually supplements his tanks with like five or six different trace elements. And I can't, uh, I can't put my finger on what they are, all of them, but I know iron is one of them. I do I dose, uh, Chato grow or Kato grow to that, to both my macroalgae tanks, as well as, uh, nitrates and phosphates. So, that's pretty much that's their got food. Things like manganese in it and manganese, yeah. And man- yeah, 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 yeah. So that it, it, whatever you know, whatever is going to make that. I don't know if those are mutually exclusive. Like if I'm sure they share some of those same mm. trace elements. Like they they both consume some of the same, but uh, it might be different enough that you wouldn't have to do too much. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, that, there's uh, that, there's your answer, affordable reefing. There, there was another question about going back to uh, product reviews. So there seems to be an abundance of content uh, related to reefing hardware on YouTube. Do you see opportunities for more content about fish? Oh, yeah. Um, the last video I did with Brett, 
A lot of people had commented it was an in-wall 310. I think it was a Planet 310 he had. Mm -hmm. But he didn't really have a ton of coral. It was a relatively young tank, but he had the most beautiful fish. Like, And I think that that's one thing that I really miss is having a, a tank with just some beautiful fish in it. Mm -hmm. Every fish that I've ever mm -hmm. purchased, except for clownfish for the most part, is like doing a job of some sort. You know, your tangs are munching on the algae, yeah. your, uh, your damsels or your... Uh, uh, what's the rasses like they're rasses yeah picking on the flatworms and things like that but i really would like to get back i had a fish only system when we lived in chicago and I had really. i had an emperor angel i had a dog face puffer i had all the oh, things you eat, that you can't have when it comes to uh to your reefing uh to your reef tank but um yeah i think that there's definite uh, there's a couple channels that just do like they'll do a video like a uh, species specific video where they'll just be mm. like yellow tang this is everything you need to know about a yellow tang in five minutes uh th so they're out there but i i definitely think that there's there's more room for that for sure there's definitely more room for it i think the problem with it is that you need people who really know their stuff so if i make it i've kept a load of yellow rasses in the past and if i were to make a video about them i'll be able to tell you this is what its behavior is like generally you know, whether it's peaceful, reef safe, what it eats, these sorts of things. But I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell you the really useful stuff that's beyond, uh, you know, anecdotal hobbyist level. Yeah. Like uh, Dr. Hillary uh, Jaff does on, uh, well, what used to be Marine Depot. So she, and I, even that, I don't know if that was mega detailed. Um, maybe it was actually, because she used to talk about specific dietary requirements. But it, it, I think it's about finding someone who, who really knows their stuff like than does with corals oh yeah because uh, if it's just you know you or i talking about it we're just gonna be saying yeah just chuck in pellet food it'll eat mice or shrimp or whatever <laughs> but uh, and which is you know which is useful to a point but i think you'd need someone who is the the fan of of, of, of fish <laughs> yeah and I, I think that there's also a fine line between like this may or may not sound bad i don't know but if you're going to be doing content like that, you're going to, you're going to alienate a lot of, a lot of people who aren't necessarily in this for the information part of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, so if yeah, you're, yeah, if you're sure. just, if you're say, take for instance, you're doing a video on a yellow tang mm -hmm. and you're getting heavy into the weeds on specifics and things like that. Uh, might be interesting for a few, but it's not going to be interesting for a lot. And so I think as a creator, you're like, what am I doing this for? You know, I got yeah, 200 yeah. views on the last video. What am yeah, I doing this for? Yeah, so totally. it takes a really special person. Uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Reef. Um, it's not Reef Geek, is it? Reef Nerd? Reef Nerd. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. There's there's one guy that is science. Yeah. He is just science. And I don't think he cares how many yeah, views okay. he gets. <laughs> okay. But it's actually, it's really good content. Like, it's really, right. really good stuff. It's actually very informational. But again, you kind of see that you get the science people. And then there's like George from Coral Fish 12G. Yeah, so that's yeah, yeah. like the wide range of like super entertaining, super informational. So, where are you going to fall in between on that YouTube it, scale? Yeah. And th there's no point for the most part, setting up a channel and spending all the time if you're just going to get a few hundred views. And another good example of that is there's a Humble Fish and Reef um, YouTube channel. And I think Humble Fish is big in uh, from uh, the forums in the States. I think yeah. there's a Humble Fish forum. So they do lots of um, videos about uh, fish disease and all these sorts of things. And they're really interesting. And if you want to know, uh, you know how to cure white spot or how to treat uh, velvet or whatever, those are the videos you want to watch. But if you, you're never going to, I've clicked on a few before and I get bored and I just, because they're, they're so, they're monotone. They're not trying to be entertaining. They're, they're there for, for information. So because I don't need to know what they're talking about, I, I, that's not something that's going to hold my attention. If I yeah. find, if I had my fit, if one of my fish had uh, a white spot, I'd be watching them very carefully and it's great. Yeah. But it, that's not really what people want to watch on YouTube. And there, there was one other comment that, um, that came in that, uh, hardware is more profitable and that that is not the case for me at all <laughs> so my my product reviews that i've done are they're not the most watched videos at all they're some of the least watched videos and actually i often say that they harm my channel because if i keep churning out videos that only get four or five thousand views yeah. youtube's going to say well this guy sucks whereas if i turn out videos that will get 
50,000 views, YouTube's going to say, well, this is great. Let's share his other videos to people. And I find that uh, that product reviews are not profitable, certainly. I mean, you get free piece of equipment, but um, that's not really, that's not, that's not cash, is it? It's, it's not so, profitable for you, but it's profitable for whoever you're representing. <laughs> well, this is true. And actually, this is, I was talking to, um, uh, to someone else about this earlier. Uh, and that I, th I think that um, YouTubers in our hobby are massively undervalued. And I think that the, the balance is uh, away from us and in favor of the, the manufacturers. I think that manufacturers get a lot more from a video that, that we might make about a product than we do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They were saying Reef Man. That is exactly who it is. Uh, Reef, Reef, Man. Reef Man. He uh, okay. he does really nerdy science stuff, and I love it. It's 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 great. It's great. <clears throat> okay, I've not come across him. Yeah, there, there we go. Reef Man, Reef Man. Uh, yeah, I've not come across him before. First off, uh, Hugo Tate uh, has a super chat. Says great chat. Oh, thank so, you. Thank you very much, Hugo. Um, and Dean Fielding likes uh, like science people. And this is the thing. <laughs> I, I think if there, there would be a, there would be a space for it. You you, you can't just be monotone and. This is uh, the you know uh, the zebrasoma flavescens. This is what it's what its natural diet is. You've got to have some pizzazz. But if you have the right person, and actually Ryan from BRS is probably the closest to that because he is he's not just hobbyist level of, of knowledge. He speaks to a ton of people. He's been doing it for a million years. He's obsessed with the hobby. Yeah. But also, if you watch his earlier videos, <laughs> I'm sure he wouldn't mind me saying he's quite flat. <laughs> and he's learned to be a bit more upbeat and he's i think he's the closest to it yeah but he's not he's not a proper he's not a scientist i'm sure you wouldn't mind me saying I'd, again, i'd throw jake adams from reef builders in there too i feel yeah, like he's yeah. okay. he's got a decent mix of both of those things as well this is very true actually i think i'm gonna do um, i think i'm gonna do all of my videos from now on like hello welcome to bahama llama coral <laughs> <laughs> i like it it's good <laughs> it's today, we're, today we're talking about the anemone clownfish relationship <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's i might want to watch that whilst i'm going to sleep it's quite a nice relaxing yeah voice. than has a good voice for that <laughs> he, he, yeah he's an expert but he, he's also so he's he talks in just his completely natural voice and he's one of those people who yeah just he holds your attention he's not there is no real pizzazz and showmanship and it's not that he's it's not that he's monotone at all it's just his normal voice is just it, it, there's just something about him that's kind of authoritative isn't there yeah yeah uh having talked to than at length uh in person at aquashell orlando he's he's just a wealth of knowledge you know and, and like you said he he captures your attention not only in video form but also in real life too so indeed and uh, we got a request for asmr emmy <laughs> hello and welcome to the reef dork channel <laughs> uh tonight we'll be focusing on our breathing Ready? in and out <sighs> Um, and uh, apparently Remy has a, a degree in fish. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, what, yeah. yeah. Jake. So he's, he's a, he's a, uh, he's a yeah, legit. Sorry, Jake. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got a, I think, in marine biology. Mm, okay. Because he spends yeah. a lot of time, or he talks a lot about um, diving and uh, and all that sort of stuff. So that, that I think I feel like that's his passion either before or up at the same level with, with reef keeping is yeah. the actual yeah. corals of the wild and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and we've got a request for a David Attenborough voice now. Oh, um. The ocean, the world's largest habitat, <laughs> filled well, we with millions of species. <laughs> we need a replacement for, for David, so you know, maybe, uh, maybe we've just found one. So. <laughs> the most venomous snake in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, I like it. <laughs> we, the, I saw David Attenborough, he did a, like a... Uh, and uh, 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 just a talk in uh, like a theatre not far from me in London a couple of years ago, and he was just so awesome. Just and he, he's he's like a million years old now, yeah. But he doesn't. He he. he I think he's getting on for a hundred. He's ninety five or something. But he doesn't seem like that. He's so sharp still, and just, oh, he's, just he's a fascinating guy. Love, love, yeah, love, I think love. that's a that's the dream job for me someday. Whenever I get mm. out of radio, is just to do like discovery channel voiceover stuff i think that would be okay. so awesome to have a studio down here in the basement come down go to the printer see what's on the printer read whatever script for the day for national geographic and just that's my job i think that'd be so cool is that a realistic um ach achievement for you no you it's kind not. of got <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i think it, it's definitely like that's that is a more glorified version of what voiceover artists do. There's a lot more. So I've looked into it. I've been represented in the past, but 
your main job when you're a voiceover actor is auditioning for jobs essentially right okay. think about it as like you're an actor now so now you have to instead of show up physically to a uh, an audition where you will be like you know physically there mm -hmm. you would you would basically like they send a script out you read and your best whatever you think the role should be and then they like it or they don't and they hire you or they don't and that's how that goes so it's a very uh very competitive i guess that and unpredictable <laughs> right okay so and you, well your uh, your impression of david atterbury is earning me money so thank you <laughs> thank you <David>. fantastic <laughs> uh, and uh, and telegram says you're going a little 1920s news brief attenborough <laughs> <laughs> the roaring 20s <laughs> Um, and uh, Errol Sullivan says he loved Blue Planet, and so I, I presume. I mean, you obviously know who David Attenborough is, and he must have, he must be uh, sort of well known in, in the states, and all the Blue Planet and all the all the documentaries have, have got over there as well, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I mean, you kind of grow up listening to, you hear a voice in fifth grade biology, and that voice just kind of sticks with you. And then you hear it in Blue Planet, you're like, oh, that's that's the same guy. He's still dude, still yeah. doing the thing. Okay sweet <laughs> sweet gig man <laughs> but so 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 it like you, you it is, it's kind of do you feel like I, I sometimes think and this is not for me of course but like there, there are some people who um, might transition well from uh, from youtube to more popular media into like a, a proper job um uh, and that's uh, doesn't necessarily youtube is very very different from traditional media completely different and if you put most good you know youtubers with a million subscribers in front of a, a, a tv camera in a, a tv studio they would be completely out of their league and, and in the wrong place but yeah. is that is that something that you think you might end up doing something in the hobby in like or in, in nature or something combining the two in a, in a professional sense is that a realistic achievement i think so um you know i don't i don't know how much longer radio lasts for me uh, mm, okay. And so that this is actually a question that I've been really pondering a lot lately. Like, what does that next phase of my life look like? Um, and I don't know. It, it, you you have a point with there's a lot of people, and I think this really uh, maybe the radio experience helps me out in this case. But because you do talk, you talk behind a mic all day, and then you eventually end up at a concert, and eventually someone will come up to you and be like, "Hey, I like the show," or "You suck. I hate you." <laughs> um, and you have to interact with them. Now you have to, instead of in going from a padded room where it's just you and a microphone mm -hmm. and maybe two other people to a crowd of people. And now you have to interact with someone one-on-one -on -one and have that same kind of energy that you would normally have on the air. And I think that there's a fine line between that. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of YouTubers that I've met where I'm like, this is you're the same person because you are totally different maybe they're very introverted this happens a lot with uh with performers even we see this with like artists like people on stage i can't imagine being an introvert and being able to go up on stage in front of fifty thousand people and sing it just blows my mind but uh and then you talk to them in an interview and they're like yes uh, i was i was drunk when i wrote that song um <laughs> on a napkin and it's just awful interview. You know what I mean? So there's an interesting, uh, there's, there's like a, a fine line between those two things. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that next thing is professionally for me. Hmm. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, if I get a million subscribers this year, maybe full time YouTube. But. Well, that's, so that's the other thing I was going to say. <laughs> I, I, so I, I've, I think that there could come a time with my channel where I could go, I could go down to three days. Um, at work a week rather than five days and do reef talk two days a week so semi-professional and part-time but i'm not sure it would ever get to the because of the niche and because it's still small unless something dramatic changed and uh i don't know um joe biden got uh, uh got into marine tank and started talking about it all the time uh, i think realistically the hobby's not likely to get huge which i feel i'm up for you know <laughs> give me that content now <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that um, would be awesome, wouldn't it? But I, I, I can't ever see it um, going huge. But I, I've, I've wondered in the past, could it be if you had sponsorship or if you had other ways, could it be full time? Is that something that you think? I mean, would you want to do it? Do you think it's possible? I think I'd, uh, you know, with the with the bulk reef supply thing, that was a very real uh, conversation. You know, um, okay. I think that if 
if there could have been a salary match of some sort, but there just it wasn't available. Like there's mm. there's it couldn't have happened. Uh, and you know it, it was a different time last year. Radio moves fast. Um, but yeah, I'd like to. I, I think that that would any anything that you can you know what do they say? You do something you love, you won't won't work a day in your life. I believe that to an extent. Because the second you are doing something, maybe you maybe you paint or something, and the second you get commission work, it doesn't feel the same anymore. It's yeah, not sure. it's not that same kind of vibe that you had before. But if I can do stuff on if I can create content on my terms, I'd be very open to that. Like I'd be very open to to making this a full time thing for sure. I feel I feel like with a with a hobby, if if you were working in uh, if you set up a local fish shop or did something like that i think that would suck the fun out of it yes and i don't think you i think that would be your suddenly you'd, you, your passion would just go out the window and or, to, or to, a, to an extent anyway and you wouldn't have a tank at home and all these sorts of things because that would be very different but I, I don't think that would be i don't think that would be the case with with youtube i think you could still do it and still really enjoy it but um, so it would be, so it could be someone actually earlier um, that I the post come out I didn't post said that you should you should uh, take over from Ryan uh, from Randy sorry at BRS <laughs> you're gonna have to forgive my ignorance because I've got no idea how far you are from Minnesota is is that com- was that would that have been possible I mean theoretically I, if they'd offered I, you I think so it, it's 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 far from here and what's okay. <laughs> what's interesting about Minnesota is and I'm not a winter person they live in winter a lot of the year. Uh, mm. But Minnesota is one of those beautiful states during the summer. Like all of the lakes are crystal clear. You could be sitting like we would go fishing. At, my family would go fishing up there uh, every so often when I was a kid. And you could be sitting, you know, in 20 feet deep of water and see the bottom. You know, it was just yeah, one of those okay. things where it's really beautiful. It's a really mm. beautiful state, but I hate snow. I can't stand That's- snow. I hate it. Oh, it's so bad. I, I like it for Christmas, and that's about it. But yeah, I, I can't do it other than that. Uh, but yeah, Minneapolis uh, would probably be where I'd have to relocate to if that was the case. Um, but yeah, I, I think George is a George is a good example of of making a living out of it. Now he got mm. to transition from college right into full time YouTuber, and it, I think I think you would be, and I hope to get this out of him because I'm I'm planning on talking with him in Dallas, like interview style. Hi, wicked. But uh, the YouTube channel is not the only thing that's going on there, you know, with Aquashella, as well as I think he might be involved in some real estate stuff. I could be wrong on that. Uh, Just knowing his dad, I had a long talk with his dad at dinner one night. (laughs) I sat right next to to Ted and he was like, what are you doing? You need to own real estate. And he got really (laughs) into it. He's, you know, he's from Greece, so he's like super passionate about it, okay. telling me all about how I should own real estate. So there's no way that George can live in that house and not own real estate because I wanted to go out and buy something right after that conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But it's that whole money thing. I don't know. Yeah. So, so I, so I had, I had no idea he was from a Greek family. So his, his dad was first generation Greek. Yes. Yeah. Cool. I love yeah. Greece. I yeah, absolutely love Greece. Um, yeah. And Greek people are just, they're, yeah, they're really expressive. And yeah. Um, what was I going to say? So uh, I had something that came into my head that was interesting to say and it popped out. But so with, with, with George, then, yeah, so I, that was it. So with, with Coralfish 12G, because of the size he is, he's bound to be branching out. And he did his, his tank, uh, his all in one tank um, setup that, that was. I don't know if that's still going, but that, that was one project. Mm-hmm. One, so with, I'm obsessed with, um, with some uh, parts of YouTube, and I watch a lot of Mr. Beast and anything that's about Mr. Beast because I like to hear the things he does. And some of the things, he's, I mean, he's a kind of a natural entrepreneur, which I re- it doesn't, that sort of stuff doesn't come to naturally to me at all. But all the other things he does, uh, he, he, he set up his own uh, chocolate bar brand, he runs restaurants, he's doing all these other things that contribute uh, to, to, to his... His income, maybe not quite as much as YouTube, but it, I'm, there might be it might be even more than that. And I think that's probably the answer. The, the people who I've seen make it on YouTube don't necessarily have AdSense as their sole source of income. It's yeah. like that might be thirty percent or whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you got to diversify at some point. And you know, if you've got 
a million people uh, in your corner giving you the AdSense, then you can branch out. And that's I think that's just good business in general. I mean, mm. you as a person wouldn't have all of your retirement fund in Starbucks, right? <laughs> so you diversify and it's the indexing and mutual funds and all that kind of stuff. So it's just, it's the same premise. I think we all kind of keep in some way, shape or form. Yeah, OK. And there's uh, there's a suggestion that you go into teaching. Going to teaching? Yeah, teaching uh, radio. Aspiring co coaching radio. services. Aspiring. See, that's the thing. And I was just telling my wife this today. I don't know if someone came up to me and was a freshman in college and was like, hey, should I go into radio? I don't know that I would suggest that. <laughs> I just and, and I love it, but I just don't know that I would suggest it. It would it would, it looks different. It would have to look different. I would say venture into the world of you know high profile podcasts instead because I think that podcasts are there too to make mm. a bunch of money. And you, I mean, you've you've listened to some podcasts where at the end of the podcast they're like produced by blah 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 yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah. There's like 15 people on the podcast. You're like, how are you paying all these people to mm. do one podcast? Well, there's there's money there. There's ad money there. So. I would I would a, say you get into that more than actual terrestrial radio. Yeah. Okay. Well, there, there was a podcast uh, called "Call Her Daddy." Have you heard of that? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. My yeah, co-host so, listens to it all the time. Yeah. Oh really? Okay. So I, I came across this when I was looking at um, uh, YouTube stuff, and I, I listened to one episode because I wanted to see what the fuss was about. But they had this huge backer. I forget what it's called. Um, sports something. Sports bar. I can't remember what it's called now. But this huge backer who uh, bought them out effectively and, and sunk a ton of cash into it. Barstool? And Barstool Sports, that's yeah. it, thank you. Um, and it's just, it was, the, the money involved was insane. And it, well, they bought I mean, Joe, then, what did they buy Joe Rogan for? What did Spotify oh, buy Joe Rogan? Oh, million, something Yeah. Like Maybe more. Case in point, <laughs> you know? And that's <laughs> Joe Rogan, who now has a huge following, but I remember when he was hosting Fear Factor which is like right. a, a really bad reality TV show back in the early 2000s, you know? So you, you yeah, yeah. everybody starts from somewhere. And if I think if you stick with something long enough and, you know, you're good at it, I mean, you'll eventually run into the money part. So he just ran into a lot of it. <laughs> he ran into a hell of a lot of it, yeah. I, I really like... So I watch a lot of um, uh, MMA, UFC, and I, I like him as a commentator. And I, I like his podcast as well. He asks interest. He's very chatty. He yeah. asks interesting questions, and yeah, would, would you do it? Would you do a a, a a reef keeping podcast? I don't know. Uh, I've 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 thought about that a couple times. There's, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I always would go down that whole path of is there are there too many podcasts already? We've got three or four, I think. I think oh, really in the hobby. I can, one, I can only name one. <laughs> which one? Reef therapy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so that's uh, so the uh, Reef News Network is going to be coming back online here soon and that was the only other consistent one that i could think of um yes i think richard That's, ross um, has one and Terrence, yeah was it reef news network uh no it's uh peter cherick and okay. uh and actually his his co-host is hillary uh jeff oh right oh interesting or was i don't know if she's coming back on board or not but she was definitely she was the new jeremy jeremy had exited as the co-host and she came on and they went they went a couple episodes and you know schedules is another thing that you got to work out with when you've got a co-host and yeah it was tough so i think they're coming back on august though which would be awesome. okay interesting fair enough well i do like podcasts and i i often get asked um by a very small section of people if if, if i do a podcast and i've just realized i missed a um a super chat rogue rogue, rogue aquariums thank you very much uh, nice collab rogue um, is awesome and, Okay, you know Rogue Aquariums. Yeah, that, uh, I think one of the most supportive commenters in the reefing space, always in the comment section. So, do, do you know Shout what? So, uh, YouTube and social media gets a bad rap for um, uh, for, for negative comments and you know paper, uh, people who can uh, keyboard warriors that sort of thing. But I, I personally find there are times when a negative comment will stand out because those are the ones that sting. But actually, the overwhelming majority, and I run a, a motorbike channel as well, it's tiny, a few hundred subscribers, and I don't really upload it. But I, I uploaded one video that really pissed people off on that, and yeah. they, they didn't hold back at all. I got absolutely panned. And <laughs> even if I upload a, a good video that's popular and people like, I still get absolutely panned. 
But it, on, on reef keeping, I always say this, this it's a totally different hobby. Actually, bikers look out for each other and, and there's a community. But it, to me, it feels like reef keepers are a, a, a certain type of person who, uh, who, who are just, it's just good people. Is that what you find for 99% of the time in, in your channel? Yeah, yeah. I, I think for the most part, as long as you're upfront and honest with people and you're not trying to yeah. blow smoke, I mean... And there are people that do that. I, I try to be as transparent as I possibly can on everything and, and level with everybody. I'm not the most informative guy in the world necessarily. I don't have the most experience, but I'm on your level. You know, we're mm. we're in this thing together and we can all learn together. And I think that building a community on on uh, learning together is huge. Uh, I, I think it's whenever you venture into the deep end, like I'm almost scared for one of my videos to hit the algorithm and to go on main pages of people because you, you venture out into the general population of people and it's yeah. like, there's a whole new world out there. I started uploading reels more often on Instagram okay. and I uploaded one about uh, one of, I think it was uh, Uno <laughs> from egg to, you know, the, the dad clownfish fanning the eggs to, you know, all the way up to where he's at now or she, whatever you decide to be. <laughs> um, and uh, there are people like, why is there only one survivor? You suck it. You suck at what you're doing. Yeah, are you yeah. terrible? You know, whatever. And it's like, no, the parents are going to eat them anyway. So I might as well try. <laughs> but but I gave this long explanation to this dude that probably has no reef tank whatsoever and is just commenting yeah. to comment. And yeah, that's well, why I'm a little he's nervous. He's been about served that. to him because he was watching, you know, recipes and then puppies and and then Instagram yeah, was like, well, why don't you watch this? You like but baby animals, a... right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But so I've only ever had that once with a video that went um, for, and it didn't get mega views, but it went, uh, it got out of the uh, out of the reef keeping hobby, and it was on about it was about a, a harlequin tusk fish, and I think it got out there because of the thumbnail. So I think that I, I had pure evil in the thumbnail on, on the picture, and this uh, like fish with enormous tusks, on the teeth. <laughs> um, and uh, and it, I got people. Because uh, I, I had bad experience with it. It ate a couple of my fish. <laughs> it was my fault because you know, yeah. that's what they do. And you, if you put a tube-shaped fish in, it's going to get eaten. But I, I did have some people who were very clearly not in the hobby talking about irresponsible and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's, that's, that's not what this is. This is not, I'm not like torturing animals or whatever. But, yeah. but it's funny. But that, that, I think generally, uh, the, most, almost all of my views are, are from people in the hobby. And I still do get criticism, of course, which is fine. And that, that's a lot of it is fair, to be honest. Um, but a lot of it is um, almost all of it is from people within the hobby. And I think everybody's pretty supportive. Yeah, I agree with that. Us. Yeah, that's I agree with that. Um, OK. And actually, there was someone else who talked about uh, when we we're talking about uh, big YouTubers and all that sort of stuff. There's one guy on YouTube who averages twenty thousand dollars in super chats every live stream. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, uh, you know, you get into a, another hobby of mine, or I guess my wife. She's got a, a a business based around Disney World, where they will style. Like, if you want, uh, if you want your like, if you're going to Disney World and you want somebody else to look at clothes and make sure that you guys are looking good on your way to Disney World, because that's a whole thing. The, okay. the wardrobe of people is a whole thing. I I pretend to understand, but I don't. But there are Disney streamers that will literally just go to the park every day after work or whatever, stream live, and it's the same thing. You know, they're making four or five hundred bucks extra every single day in super chats, mm. just walking around Disney. So if you live in Orlando or you live in Anaheim, I think is where Disneyland is, um, and you want a little part time job. <laughs> get a season pass and walk around and just ride rides every night and you can make yourself some decent money. So it's, it's so bizarre because these are jobs that didn't exist when I was looking for, when I was thinking about what I wanted to do for a career, but, and probably didn't exist, you know, 10 years ago for, for a lot of them. Um, and yet now they're, it's what people aspire to. And, and I, something I saw the, the other day that we're talking about um, people in the UK anyway, what do you want to be when you grow up? And YouTuber was number two. Yeah. after like teacher or policeman or whatever <laughs> yep, yep that's my my kids uh you know will run around the house saying but i can subscribe to the channel dad <laughs> <laughs> okay and, and i think that they think it's they think it's cool that i have a youtube channel i okay. i've her, overheard my daughter who is seven explaining to one of her friends that i have a youtube channel and uh it was like the talk of that little five minute period that they dwelled on that but i thought that was kind of fun 
<laughs> what is, is your family kind of into the hobby and, in, and, and into the, uh, the channel and that sort of stuff? Um, I, they're never really included in any of the videos if that's what you're asking, but, uh, right. you know, I, I, they, they have to be kind of, especially my kids who are down here constantly just kind of looking at stuff, seeing what's in the tanks. It's fun because we'll go through and, you know, I'll go to the St. Louis aquarium. We got an aquarium back in 2020. So it's a pretty new public aquarium. And you go to any of the tanks where there's like clownfish or blue tangs or any of the fish from Finding Nemo and everybody's like Nemo and Dory. I'm like, kids, you call them that? No, they are clownfish. It is a blue tang. That is not what they're called. We do not call them Nemo or Dory or any of those. This is a cleaner shrimp. This is not Jacques. (laughs) So, yeah, it it is fun to kind of go to the pet store and they know what the actual fish names are now, which is cool. But um, uh, my son and my daughter, especially my son, is super into nature. Just like, oh, we can, okay. Probably gonna be one of those like science people growing up. I I think that'd be really fun to witness. So, very cool. Okay, I, I do like that. And there's so there's uh, I, I presume reef keepers from the states, policemen. I, I don't know if policemen was number one. It's probably a different uh, vibe over over in the states to it is to what it is over in the UK. Um, but maybe it was teacher. I don't know, whatever it was. But that was the point I'm making is when I was growing up, I wanted to be a, a policeman. Um, and my mum was a teacher, and those are like the jobs that I knew about. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Anyway. Uh, and Reef Beef pod- Podcast. That's I've seen that's Rich, uh, someone, and yep. some other guy. Yeah, yeah. That's so I've seen, them, I've seen them on Richard Ben Ross, Johnson, I think. I think is the yeah, other guy. Yeah, that sounds familiar. They're, they're, they're good. They're interesting. I'm not really a, a podcast. Um, I'm not really the podcast type. I do like Joe Rogan, but I don't really listen to many of the uh, the reefing ones. I did listen to the Skimate podcast, Skimate podcast with Terence and <laughs> uh, someone else whose name I've forgotten as well. <laughs> Skimate, I like that. Yeah, but there was um, what's the guy who set up a who was a he set up a shop, Mad Hatter's Reef, Jeff. Oh yeah. So he did a, a podcast, but I think it was just him on his own. Yeah, and I remember I was like, it, uh, the first couple times I listened to it, he said uh, he started the podcast with uh, "Let's kick the tires and light the fires" or something like that, and ah. I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <Not> <laughs> that is that is in the radio world what we call uh, cliche, but uh, okay. <laughs> but no, love love. He's one of the guys that got me into uh, yeah. saltwater reef keeping. He's awesome. I love that. So. But I would always always listen to his podcast too, which I think eventually just became uh, the audio from his videos, if I'm not mistaken. Like he would just uh, rip okay. the audio from his video and just throw it up in a podcast form. So see, that's one thing I'm not keen on doing. Uh, so people have asked, people ask quite regularly if I'll do this live stream as 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 a podcast. I don't. I just don't, I feel like it wouldn't work, and I've, I always feel like you're if you're if you're doing that and if you're posting Instagram content onto YouTube or TikTok. You're kind of you're conning your audience because it's just it's not you, you need to be every platform is different you need to be doing your own thing so I don't like the idea of doing this as a podcast yeah. I don't think it would work personally yeah but anyway um, so I think we've we've pretty much come to to the end of the questions and uh, and I've asked you the stuff I wanted to ask about um, so we'll we'll wrap up shortly w- was there anything else that any kind of closing words of wisdom. Remy wisdom that you can offer or anything else that we've not talked about you wanted to talk about? Um, I don't think so, really. Uh, if you could subscribe to the channel, it'd be awesome. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything. Just, you know, look out for new videos as they as they come about. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to get... I'm on a weekly schedule now that may be plus or minus a day here okay. and there, depending on, uh, you know, as I get going again here. Um, someone did ask about, I don't know if they're still in the chat or not, but someone asked about my F-18 experience. Um, I got F-18. to fly, I got to fly with the blue angels a couple years ago in an F-18 fighter jet, uh, as part of the radio station. So that, that was something that, uh, that I had, um, uh, been involved with through the radio station and wanted to get into one of those jets. Cause they always give like a media yeah, that's the F-18. It's actually built in St. Louis, the F-A-18. Oh, really? Yeah, so they just switched over to to Super Hornets. And uh, when I flew with them, uh, no, I did not pass out. Barry. <laughs> uh, but that was that's a very real thing. Like, it's either passing out or puking. 
And if you yeah, can get yeah, if yeah. you can get That's through something. all of the what they call the card, which is all the moves that they do for media people, right. which involve everything Trying from you pass out. going upside down to pulling seven and a half G's to uh, going almost to the speed of sound, all these things. If you can get through that without passing out or vomiting, fantastic. You did your job. And I did both. I got so close on the last what they call a carrier break where I believe okay. the, the move is because these are Navy planes. So I believe the carrier break is when they fly over the um, the aircraft carrier they're about to land on to make sure that it is clear for landing. But in that maneuver is a very it's a it's a banked turn seven and a half G's. And I almost like the tunnel vision thing is real. I started right. seeing like black, yeah, yeah. black coming in and I almost passed out at the end. But uh, <laughs> I, I stayed awake. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. So. Well, so, so Telegram uh, uh, is talking about uh, F-16, and he said uh, he went to Mac 1.2. Yeah, F-16, that, uh, that'll pull nine and a half. That'll, that'll pull a little Maybe. bit more. But, but the Air Force, you get, you, get the, uh, you get the G suits. So Yeah, so they, those, they squeeze the yeah. blood moving out. Or whatever, I don't know what it is. But... Okay, and he was also recommending the, uh, the National Aquarium in Baltimore, post-haste to get there. How far is Baltimore from you, Baltimore? Um, probably ten to ten to thirteen hours, I'd say drive. So it's That's it's a, a flight. It's a flight. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a long way. Okay, maybe a flight on uh, an F sixteen. Right. Yeah, <laughs> forty minutes in one of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. Well, look, thank you very much for coming on, Remy. And for for those of you who don't follow Remy, um, uh, it's an awesome channel, and I put a link in the description to uh, to uh, to the channel. So let's go and subscribe and uh, and check it out. And you are back with regular videos now, so you're going to be uh, you're going to be plastering um, YouTube with uh, with content. So yeah, yeah. Hope to be, hope to be here in the next uh, next uh, year. I guess the Excellent. rest of the year, the rest of this year. So yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I'll look forward to that. And thank you again for coming along. And uh, and everybody else, thank you for joining in and uh, watching. And I'll catch you again next week. Bye, guys. <laughs>